Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. Round one of the Rugby Championship will get underway this weekend. It is Australia versus South Africa in Brisbane um, before we head to New Zealand where they will host Argentina at the Sky Stadium. And it uh, should be a very interesting round of rugby. We expect to see the two favourites, South Africa and New Zealand, coming away with wins. Uh, if we look at the world ranking previews, for example, they very much talk um, to the fact that those two are being one and three in the world are the overarching favorites. In fact, um, if they both were to win this weekend, uh, the rankings wouldn't do anything. You know, that that's how, you know, sort of far ahead they are from their oppositions. And uh, South Africa argued maybe with a, the, with a harder task in terms of being away and being at, uh, at Brisbane, which has got such a, a good record at the Suncorp Stadium, which is apparently sold out. But you look at the Australian side, we're going to look at all the sides, by the way, as well as some of the stats. And I think we'll probably all agree that uh, the South Africa side, the Springboks, are very stacked and should definitely be getting a result against Australia. Before we do that, please do smash the like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well. Let's have a look, shall we? And uh, this is where we are. Um, and first match first is let's go to Australia versus South Africa. 6.30 kickoff if you are down in South Africa. Uh, the last time we played against Australia was a 43 points to 12 victory um, on the 8th of July in 2023 so a long time ago really over a year ago a lot of change with australia but uh, for the box still very very strong and uh, as you can see there the next time we play them will be once again next weekend at uh, this time more of a friendly um time so uh, as you can see there it is at the suncorp stadium let's have a look at some of the stats for example head-to-head -head meetings in the last five australia have one three south africa two this is what i keep saying before the rugby championship that we have to send a strong side over to australia because we have a horrible horrible record over there and um we've got a very bad recent record um, against uh, against Australia. So, uh, uh, interesting enough, if you look at, for example, the average points scored, we have scored more points than them over the last five meetings. And uh, the big thing is, 80% of the time, the team that scores the first try wins, while 60% of the time, the home team does win. Um, so, if we look at the form in the last five games, for example, for example um, but one loss in the last five for both teams, Australia's last loss coming against um, Wales. They are since in a four-match winning streak, um, beating Wales twice, Georgia once, as well as... Um, there's a game, it's Portugal. Um, and uh, if we look at, uh, yeah, well, Portugal, and if we look at uh, South Africa, obviously, um, thumping Portugal recently, that loss against Ima one point before that winning the previous three, as well as the previous, I think it was about four, um, or five, I think it was. I think it was four. Um, it went um, Tonga, oh, sorry, Samoa, France, England, or yeah, so it would have been the four before that. So, you know, reasonably a long time since we've lost, if you take away that other island game. If you look at the last sort of 12 months, we've only lost to Ireland twice. Um, apart from that, um, and New Zealand once, we've won every single game. Well, actually, if you look at the last 12 months from now in August, we actually have only lost twice, and that was against Ireland. Um, but if we look at some of the other stats, for example, uh, uh, in terms of uh, the previous five meetings, um, as you can see, that is the, the issue that I'm sort of talking about is uh, when we have been over in Australia, uh, we have struggled. Going down to the 2022, going down to the 21, and uh, that has been the issue for for uh, the box. Let's have a look at the team, shall we? And uh, this is what I mean when I talk about the Australian side not being particularly strong. So let's have a look at it. So that front row of Isaac Kelly, Matt Faisler, and Alan Alatoa, very inexperienced. Alan Alatoa, the captain, 70 caps to his name, um, but uh, I think just 10 or less than 10 caps between the other two players there. You look at the other end and you've got, uh, you know, France Lohova, 70 plus caps, Bongi Manambi, 70 plus caps, uh, an Oxen chair, I think it's about 13, 34 um, sort of caps as well. So, you know, World Cup winning front row versus a very inexperienced front row. Uh, it's a nice second row, though. I do like Nick Frost. I think, I think he's a good player. I think Lakan Salakai Loto is also a very talented player. Um, uh, and uh, it's a very nice back row as well. The, the bit of a, a sort of ace, potential ace up the sleeve of Joe Smith is the, uh, the untried um, and tested college Tizana at this level who will be making his debut um, this weekend. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes over there. Um, Rob Valentini in the number six jersey, which allows for the very abrasive Harry Wilson in the number eight. Uh, if we look at the halfback pairing, it is Jake Jordan and uh, no uh, Lola Sio. A nice set of pairing, Hunter Basami and Lenny Katar. And a pretty good back three. I think uh, Philip Duggenau, we've seen how good he's been in, the, in a short sort of career so far. Andrew Kellaway, Tom Wright, very experienced. Uh, missing out on the likes of Marikai Korobeti. 
um, and missing out on the likes of a Tino Tupo as well as, uh, for me, I think missing out on a Nick White. If we look at the bench over there, um, it is Josh Nass, James Slipper, Zane Nongor, Jamie Williams, uh, Luke Rama, Tate McDermott, Tom Leinach, and Dylan Peach. So really just James Slipper and Tate McDermott who bring experience. And then you look at the Safkin side, and it's 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 immense, if we're going to be brutally honest. Um, you know, World Cup winners at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, and uh, and you'd be at 8 and all of those full of form. And then you look at the World Cup, the, the, the back line, and World Cup winners at 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 13 out of 15 players were at the World Cup last year and have won the World Cup. And a lot of those have won two World Cups. In fact, all but... Um, Kurt de Orens uh, and Oxen Chair um, have are actually double World Cup winners. So we're incredibly experienced. The big sort of uh, potential issue, I think, for the Spring Box is Sash Farm Gomez, who 10, not really an issue, but in terms of an inexperience over there, that's something that Australia will definitely target. But um, if things go wrong, you know, break glass type of emergency situation, you've got such quality on the bench. Malcolm Marks um, is a game changer. Quackle Smith is a game changer. Hanjay Pollard is Mr. Ice Cold and uh, has been in this situation many, many times and can be that level head. So, uh, yeah, you expect this game to be uh, pretty straightforward for the box. And then we go to New Zealand. And uh, as I said, at the Sky Stadium. Um, and uh, uh, an interesting one for, for Argentina, who had a very shaky um, stay, uh, time in, um, in when they hosted uh, France. So in the down in two, we have to wait and see how things go. If you look at the last five meetings, uh, New Zealand winning four, Argentina winning one. Uh, home team winning twenty. Home team wins twenty percent. Um, first try wins sixty percent, um, and that's basically because recently uh, New Zealand have played over in Argentina more often in those last five games. Um, but if we look at uh, the form, for example, the last time the New Zealand lost was in the final against South Africa. They beat um, England twice and beat Fiji, as mentioned, a rocky series for Argentina. Um, the last time they lost, uh, well, they lost their first game, then bounced back uh, and beat them. It was a bit of a sort of second string France side and then a very comfortable victory over Uruguay, which was kind of um, expected. So they're on a two win winning streak, um, but I don't think much can really be read into that. Um, very interesting to see this matchup, actually, sort of the head to head between Santo Carreras and David McKenzie. Um, look at the last five games, both of them scoring a reasonable amount of. Uh, of points, similar amount of essential points as well. So sort of equally as important to um, both sides. And that should be a very nice matchup over there. Uh, look at the last five meetings. Um, as mentioned over there, um, New Zealand are playing uh, away quite a bit. So, so three out of those five games and um, lost that one game that they did lose to Argentina was um, at home. So uh, it is an interesting sort of recent record. That was back in, in, in 2022. Uh, what a game that was from Argentina. Phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, whenever Argentina beat New Zealand, they've done it twice in the last couple of years, last three years. It's always been absolutely phenomenal um, performance from Argentina. Let's have a look at the sides, shall we, uh, in terms of how they line up. So this is how New Zealand line up. Uh, big news is that there is no Bowden and Barrett, who is uh, injured. Um, as a result, Artie Sevilla will be captaining the side. It's a bit of an inexperienced second row in uh, Tupo Vai and Sam Derry. Sam Derry, very much new to the setup. Excited to see what he can do. Tupo Vai has been around, but uh, has obviously has been a bit of a bit part player. So the front row is a solid one of Ethan DeGroot, Cody Taylor, Tyro Lomax. Interesting to see again how that second row. Um, it's a nice back row of Ethan Blackhead, Dalton Papali'i and Artie Sevilla. No Sam Kane just yet. Um, I think a player who they are going to miss or are missing and uh, I think definitely somebody who will come in over there. TJ Perrinar has recovered from that ankle injury and he will start next to Dan McKenzie. He's continued to be backed by Scott Robertson in the number 10 jersey. Uh, an injury to Stephen Perifita means that uh, all, uh, the other Barrett, uh, Bowden Barrett, will also start and then obviously Jordy in the midfield. Um, Mark Talaire, Sebi Reese, the two wings. But a change in the midfield sees Anton Leonard Brown start, uh, which I think is a very good decision. I'm a massive Anton Leonard Brown fan. Not to say that uh, wine Rico Awani is not world-class, but uh, I just really enjoy watching Anton Leonard Brown. Uh, off the bench, it is Asafa Amur, Opa Tuanga Fasi, Fletcher Josh Lord, Wallace TT, nice new player, Cortez with team, who's got a try, um, David, I think it was the last game, um, and uh, then Rico Awani. And Will Jordan does make a return to the, the setup, and you expect to see him in the number 14, if not the number 15 jersey, probably against South Africa at the end of the month. If we see Argentina under the uh, steward, the, the guidance of uh, Felipe Contemponi now, uh, Thomas Gajlo, Ignacio Ruiz, Eduardo Bello in that front row, backed up by Franco Molina and Pedro Rubiolo. So also a bit of a, a new look second row to what we're used to kind of seeing 
for Argentina. It's a nice front row, though. I think that front row battle should be pretty good and uh, absolute world-class quality in this back row of uh, Pablo Matera, Marcus Kramer, and Jean Martin Gonzalez. Um, those of you who watch the channel know how much I enjoy watching Jean Marc Gonzalez in particular. Um, and Marcus Kramer absolutely loves playing against the All Blacks. Gonzalo Bertano will part the center of the halfback pairing. Uh, Chuka Barros and Lucio Sinti in the centers there. Nice combination. Watch out for Matthew Carreras. He's small in stature, but big in heart and uh, very nifty players. Matthew Moroni and uh, Jean Cruz Malia at uh, full back. Then off the bench, the legendary Augustin Crevy, Michael Vivas, Joel Slavi, Efren Elias, Thomas Lavanini, Jacques Novido, Latoura Bazanveles, and Thomas Albanos, who's a very nice player as well. Um, interestingly enough, if we look at uh, some of the stats, uh, we've, got, uh, we've got some stats over here, um, just as a courtesy of, of World Rugby. Um, and if we look at, for example, the uh, New University of Argentina, Angus Gardner taking uh, charge of this game. And uh, he has some of the head-to-head the, the -head notes. Um, so both of our teams wins in this fixture come the last four years, although New Zealand have won the last three meetings. Um, if we look at uh, the rugby championship sort of previously, for example, um, obviously New Zealand have won the most titles with 10, Austin have won nine. Um, and if you look at the last results in 2023, New Zealand um, beat Argentina, beat South Africa, beat Australia. They went for three for three. Argentina went uh, one from three. So not great from, uh, from an Argentina perspective. Uh, and this is the big thing I think Archie, that 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 uh, Scott Robertson is looking to try and continue is the fact that they are on a six-game winning streak in the rugby championship. Uh, their best run is 60 matches. They are the three-time defending champions. And uh, if you take if you if you count the the one in 2020, which didn't have South Africa, they're technically in four. The last time they lost the rugby championship was in 2019, um, when South Africa won it. So lots to play for this weekend. In theory, it should all be pretty uh, straightforward, I think, but. Um, you never know. Argentina have a knack for putting things out of the fire over in New Zealand. So maybe they can do it once again. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Give me your score predictions. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.